what we're going to talk about is the live paint feature and not just the live paint feature, but also um, there's a way to take the live paint feature, which is basically Adobe's equivalent of Microsoft Paint and actually separate those different sections that you painted into separate shapes, which is really great because normally you'd have to stack them on top of each other to have the separate shapes or just live paint it and it's really not user fr it's not it's not very um optimized it's not very editable when you just live paint an object um in addition to that we'll we'll do a little bit of type on text and we'll also um reflect so i will first first when we start this let's keep in mind that we're going to um be reflecting our original shape, which means you kind of want everything to meet up in the same point. So I start like that, so that when it's reflected, it'll um, it'll look reflect perfectly, it'll match up perfectly at uh, these two points right here. And yeah, so we'll, we'll get going, kind of have this, this straight line here is our, is our, the middle of our design. And I'm making these lines on perfectly horizontally by holding down shift in order to um, make them make them match up great. And we'll just have this come out to there and meet it together. When you're making a live paint, you're doing it. Um, you're when you when you're making a live paint, you're just making an outline and then filling it in later. So right now we're just making an outline and stuff like this this little section right here which is the fold of our banner and then, um that i used to think if i wanted to add any gradients or anything that you would normally add to a shape i used to think that it would have just had to be its own closed shape underneath this but as you can see this is not a closed shape it is just a little triangle which when you get into more complicated designs is a big deal to have to deal with all those little shapes constantly overlapping each other and getting in the way. So let's reflect this. Actually, let's let's even add another another little line in there just to kind of give it something else and show off this feature a little better. So I'm going to command C, command shift V. Um, command V is to paste, command shift V is to paste into the exact same place that you copied it. So now it's selected automatically after you paste it. I'm going to go to object, transform, reflect. I'm going to reflect it vertically. Reflecting vertically means you're reflecting over the vertical line. So if it's here, it'll be there. Horizontally is the opposite. So that's reflected, you can see it there. I'm gonna grab it, hold shift while I'm moving it. It keeps it, um, stops it from moving vertically and match it up perfectly. And then I'm switching between A and P for A is my direct selection tool, P is my pen tool. I explained this in my last tutorial actually, that was how to use the pen tool. If you need to know, if you're a little unclear with how to use the pen tool, I suggest watching that tutorial first. It's a little more of a beginner's. So I direct selected these two lines and I'm just gonna get rid of them. So there, we have a okay shape. Um, I know I'm always saying this in my, in my tutorials, but I'm not really too concerned with how good, the, how good this looks because that's not, that's not really the point. Maybe later I'll get into tutorials where I show you that. So I'm gonna select all of it and how you use the paintbrush is to press K. That's the shortcut, it's also right up here. And then you're able to just kind of navigate through all your swatches and pick whatever you want. You can even use the arrows to navigate them. You can see how the colors are moving above my clicker there. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll make this a blue ribbon. And so live paint is, is good for making these flat objects like that. I'm even going to get rid of this, of this here stroke. So it's like a decent flat uh, ribbon, pretty generic. Um, it's symmetrical, which is nice because we reflected it. 
But the problem is you really can't add gradients without, you can't, they, they're not acting as shapes. This is all one merged live paint. Here's how I found to, to expand it and uh, well, to separate it into separate shapes. You have to click expand. And I normally just do it twice, just in case, um, depending on what's in there. And I don't think I've actually had to expand it twice, but then what you do have to do is you do have to ungroup it twice. Once it's ungrouped twice, I expand twice, ungroup twice. Now these are all separate shapes as before it was an outline that was filled in one shape that really I couldn't do much with other than change the colors of the openings. I just moved that command Z is to go backwards, um, knocking them all back into place. So now that they're separate shapes, I can actually go through and add whatever gradients I want. And, um, you know, kind of general rule of thumb is don't go too overboard with the gradients. In some of these tutorials, I am going a little overboard with the gradients. And that's just because I'm really trying to show what these features can do. And I kind of being a little over dramatic with it. So this one, I'm going to add this, I'm going to add the same gradient over here, but I'm going to want to reflect it. If you can see there, I like when the dark, the, I want the dark to be under the ribbon and then it gets a little more blue over there. And this one, I'll just do this. This is the same gradient that's up there, but for now that's fine. And the default gradient when you click it is for it to go horizontally. And I'm just reversing those. If you wanna change it, like I changed these to vertical, that was by pressing shortcut G or the gradient tool up there. And you can see how I can kind of make them go whatever angle I want. Command Z, Command Z to go back. And yeah, so now I actually have this pretty all right little uh, little ribbon guy there. In order to type on path is all you need is a path. I could take it from here or just or create my own with the uh, with uh, with the pen tool line which I think I'm gonna do for this. I'm actually going to make a new layer and just lock that one so I'm not getting in my own way. P for pen tool. And yeah, I'm just gonna go right to the intersection there. I know that this is all on a perfect straight line, so I'm just gonna go there to there and see how I have that nice line that will follow the bottom of this perfectly. How to text how to type on this now is the T tool, the type tool up there. You just click on it. And at first, at first it's all, um, actually, at first when you do this, you can see here that is actually the left of this. If I left justified it, you can see how that's the left. You have to pull this all the way over to that end if you want to get it to be, um, if you want it to take up the full line. And then I'm going to middle justify it. So I have my thing right here in the middle and I can increase the size. I could make this probably even fit in better if it was all caps. And actually that was, that was actually kind of the right um, length banner there, right? Length to height ratio. You can add white there. If it's tough to see, you could add a little drop shadow. Um, let's see, we'll do twos. Two, two, two across the board. And you have a pretty all right thing there. Um, What's, what's also kind of neat sometimes, if you guys didn't, didn't see um, the appearance one too, that's a good tutorial and shows you how to use all this um, appearance over here. But let's say if I wanted to make this, okay, we'll, we'll have that um, thing there. You know, from here you can go, you can get way more complicated. Sometimes I'll, sometimes I'll take these and make an overlay with my transparency. You were a gripe on my transparency. Oh, did I get rid of it? Oh, here it is. Um, 
you, know, you can make like an overlay over the top and now it's kind of doing this cool thing with the letters. It's a little, uh, oh, that, I guess that's getting too complicated for now. I'll do a different one with the transparencies. Transparencies are really cool too. So yeah, so what we did was live paint, um, creating those shapes into live paint, reflecting the shape and texting on a line. And we also kind of subsequently dove into, um, dove in a bit, to a little bit on the pen tool and some on uh, gradients. Yeah, like gradient directions. And it's hard to do one thing without covering a, a few, you know? And this design uh, is really is really nothing great, but the, the main thing I want you to get out of this is that live paint feature and um, separating them into shapes. And it's just, it's, it's really useful. I'll make really complicated things like that. Just use the live paints, like make a full face portrait and then go through, paint each one the color I want and then separate them into shapes and then change them into gradients. Or really, you can make complicated lifelike stuff with this. Uh, yeah, so like I said before, Carl Co Design, that's me. Email me with any questions. Um, yeah, comment on the video. I'll be super responsive. Um, I, I enjoy doing this. I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this and listen. I hope that you learned something. It's a really, 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 really useful technique. I'm promising you guys these are useful things here. Okay, well, anyways. That'll be, that'll be it for uh, today, and I look forward to the next time. All right, guys, thanks. Stop screen recording.